We'll talk about uh, heart failure, which is a chronic disease caused by past heart attacks, problems with the valves of the heart, genetic defects, the aging of the population is a major factor. These things lead to the main problem in, the, in this disease, which is the poor functioning of the heart, the poor squeezing of the main chamber of the heart. And this leads to fatigue, shortness of breath with minimal exertion, swollen legs. It's a tough life. 50% of the patients will die within five years from diagnosis. Currently, we have in America six million heart failure patients with half a million new cases added per year. It's the most common hospital admission diagnosis and its cost to the healthcare system is greater than all cancers and acute heart attacks combined. To treat our heart failure patients, we have pharmaceutical therapies, <coughs> surgical therapies, and devices like pacemakers, defibrillators, but what has really captured the imagination of both the industry and the academic community uh, has been the development of total artificial heart. And that was achieved here, the University of Utah, through a collaboration between cardiology, cardiothoracic surgery, and the Department of Artificial Organs, led by Willem Kolf. And you can see here the pictures of the historic event with Barney Clark, the dentist from Seattle, being the first human ever implanted with a total artificial heart. Since then, the field has evolved. And nowadays, instead of taking completely uh, the heart out and putting a total artificial heart, we implant the so-called ELVATS, which stands for left ventricular assist devices. And what uh, these devices do is they kind of suck the blood from the apex of the heart, they put, push it to the pump, and from there back to the circulation, kind of bypass the failing heart. Utah has been at the forefront of the evolution of the field, a major center in all key trials that established this therapy. Maybe the most famous patient living with an ELVAT uh, is uh, the ex-Vice President Dick Cheney, uh, the pump kept him, kept him in a great condition for two years, and as you may have heard, a couple of weeks ago, he was able and healthy enough to undergo a complicated operation like a heart transplant. And this is one of our own patients who chronically lives with an alva. What has been really exciting and impressing with this uh, alva therapy are some clinical observations we are doing on our patients. This imaging mortality is called a cocardiography, and you can appreciate here the main chamber of the heart in one of our end-stage heart failure patients before the implantation of the ALVAT. And I can tell you that this is a very poor function. And the squeezing here makes us scared when we see. We know that this patient is not doing well. The same patient, the same chamber of the heart, the same imaging modality, a few months later, after the ALVAT implantation, you can appreciate how much the, the improvement in the squeezing function came back to normal. It seems that the heart, during this period of time, that the pump was doing the job, kind of rested, and self-repair mechanisms were activated, and the heart somehow managed to recover. However, this is not happening with all of our patients. Here you can see another patient. The same disease, the same stage of the disease, end stage. And you can appreciate that the squeezing function of the heart remains the same as bad, both before and after. So how do often we see patients like Mr. A? And how often do we see patients like Mr. B? And what's different between Mr. A and Mr. B? So to answer these questions and many others, we put together a large program. And we developed the infrastructure to recruit patients, both from Utah and from states around the country. And uh, we have been collecting a full area of information at the functional, structural, and molecular level. And we have enrolled so far more than 150 patients, a number that exceeded our expectations. But what has been even more exciting is that we are finding this remarkable recovery to happen in approximately 20% of our ELVAT patients. With the heart of these patients and its function being improved anywhere between 50 and 350%, this is unprecedented. This level of response is unprecedented. We have never seen such a response with other heart failure pharmaceutical or stem cell therapies. This is why I commute from Athens the last 4.5 years. The appetizer, the appetizer, were preliminary observations we did in Europe with similar patients. Because I had received my training here in Utah 11 years ago as a heart failure fellow, it was clear that this is the place that we can do that. We have the history and the tradition, you saw Barney Clark, and we have the people in the field to make it happen. And we strongly believe that this data and this program 
offer a huge opportunity to transform the current clinical practice of heart failure. Nowadays, we treat our heart failure patients with FDA-approved standard heart failure medications, and as the disease advances, we try other options like stem cells and heart transplant. They have their limitations. And LVATs are being used, as you saw, being used in Dick Cheney as a bridge to transplant till we find a compatible donor. What we are proposing and actively investigating is to change this and deviate this pathway. Seek for recovery, explant the device, abort transplant, and leave the patient with his native heart, which in the meantime has recovered. To attack this task, we put together uh, a platform, a huge platform, between the heart failure program, and as Dean mentioned, my colleagues, Joseph Stelic and Greg Salzman, and uh, one of our patients are with us today, and you will have the chance to meet them during lunch. And the molecular medicine program that Dean is directing. And this is a huge team, not only the people that you can see uh, in the picture, and the question that we are trying to answer is how? How does the heart recover? Because if we can figure out how does this happen, then we can go back to the other 80% of the patients, not the 20 that recovered, the 80 that did not recover, and maybe find ways to activate this recovery in these patients as well. And we are looking in many things. And this is tissue from the hearts of our patients before and after Elvad implantation. And with green, you can see here the cells, the muscle cells of the heart. And with Wide arrows, you can see after the ALVAT, these pink molecules called H3P that we find to be expressed more after ALVAT implantation, suggesting that maybe regeneration is happening. The muscles, the, the cells of the muscles of the heart may be giving birth to more uh, muscle. In summary, what we are trying to do is overturn the widely held view, especially in the basic science world, that the human heart is incapable of recovery to severe injury and disease. Five years from now, our dream is to reach our holy grail, which is to understand recovery. Predict which patient can recover and which patient cannot recover. Personalized medicine, you receive recovery, VAD as a bridge to recovery, the other patient receives transplant, the other patient receives another therapy, and in essentially transform people's lives. Thank you.